Hello and welcome to the Nesson Soccer Podcast. I'm Mark, along with Marcus and Nicholas Goss, continuing our World Cup coverage. I think we've been pretty thorough, but the round of 16 is here, and I guess it's time to ramp it back up. You know, I thought we were ramped up. We're just going to ramp it up even more. But the Special energy is required for the knockout rounds. Yeah, absolutely. What a group stage we had, though. We're not the only ones to be calling it an instant classic, and it's maintained its immediate... Who else like is going to be instant classic? I don't know. I think I've heard it other places, just on the. I think on the Marcus was first, though. He was first Marcus to, was to first. realize how good it was. Marcus was yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. One match day. Yeah. Game day. Game day one. Yeah. So we'll just start with. I mean, before we start, we, we've got our, our impromptu printout brackets that we're going to sort of fill out pen and paper right now on the podcast. But what were your biggest takeaways from the group stage? Besides Germany being eliminated, or we can talk about Germany being eliminated, we probably should. What stood out the most is that Europe is still dominant. Yeah. 16 teams, 10 of them are from Europe. We have, what, four from South America? Yeah. Something like that. And one from Asia and one from CONCACAF, Mexico. So, yeah, Europe is where it's kind of the center of the uh, soccer universe still. Yeah. I mean, for My me, biggest I thought, takeaway. Sorry, I thought VAR was was well used this tournament. That was a, a good introduction into the World Cup. Also, a lot of stoppage time goals, a lot of late drama, which right. I thought was really exciting. Mm-hmm. I thought the group play was was. We had a couple groups that were decided literally on the last matches of the groups, um, last minutes even. And I'm really excited for one side of the bracket here, and we'll get into that coming up. But yeah, I thought the group was tremendous group stage, late drama. Well. Beyond what we've said so far, yeah, Germany's eliminated. Marcus, you talked about this in a separate segment yesterday that did, yes. they had basically half their field starting lineup, or was half their field starting lineup for the from the World Cup final in 2014, mm-hmm. no longer on the team. Yep. And the guys that came in to replace them weren't quite up to snuff. No. Nope. So why Germany did that had a Germany had a golden generation. That. But the whole DOS reboot was supposed to be just this machine that churned out winners year after yeah. year. <laughs> and how many of them are now? I mean, look at what Germany's clubs have done since Bayern Munich won the Champions League in 2013. Not None much. of them have gotten near the final. Dortmund, Bayern's oh, is that because Bayern takes all of their, those players? Well, that's part of it. Uh, they don't always do right yeah. by those players or things like that. But uh, I don't think it was DOS reboot. I think it was immigration. You know, Mesut Ozil, Sami Khedira. Miroslav Klose, Lukas Podolski, those guys are born in Germ- in uh, Poland. Right. You know? Yeah, this reboot thing, I'm not believing in it so much because how many top German players have gone abroad and thrived in uh, the last five to ten years? The last one I could think of, Michael Ballack right. at Chelsea. You know, he was a, a squad player. Now. Yes, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Tony Kroos, he's the only one I would you know put in that German born and bred world-class player over the last three to five years sure Thomas Muller I would like to think but where was he in the in the World Cup so yes there's this DOS reboot completely overblown golden generation is what it was well I guess we'll see how they'll bounce back in the Euros I mean they did win the Confederations Cup last year so this is pretty shocking that they ended up apples and oranges yeah it's it's completely different and they had completely different roster so really disappointing result but I think Germany will be fine going forward right they have a, as much or more talent than just about any nation and it didn't work for them this this tournament but Who's I think the talent Timo Werner Timo Werner is very good <laughs> Joshua Kimmich is one of the best if not the best right back in the world you know he plays Lom he's not as good as Philip Lom but he's not still yet. elite. He's, he has that potential I think we you know with more seasoning and more experience this team will be good now I don't know if 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 your is gonna coach again no. we'll see probably not he's done what Two World Cups and a couple Euros now. Yeah, he's been there since uh, 2006. So maybe they'll have a new coach, but you know, I think they have a lot of talent coming through. Not to linger and on one, how one more much point. Of that talent is. I mean, who 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 on the on the German team do you do you really not like among, among the starters? What do you mean not like? Like you know, you, you it seems like you I just don't think they're that the good. They're, they're 2014 winners. The guys that are still there aren't as good as they were four years ago. Maybe winning the World Cup, winning the Champions League, you'd lose a little bit of hunger. Sure. Yeah. Tony Kroos, the only one that's improved since 2014, I think. 
I'm, I'm pretty confident that Germany can can develop talent. I mean, they've they've had a, a remarkable run of consistency since what, 2002, I believe. Yeah. Golden I mean, generation. Well, a lot of those Semi players in, a lot in of the, every tournament lot, between 2006 and, and those, 2016. I mean, a lot of those players from 02 and 06 and 10 weren't part of the 14 team or, or this team. So, I mean, I, I, they Blom, do as well a job. Schweinsteiger, as, yeah. Podolsky, Close, Murdasacker, to an extent. And, you know, I mean, the, the, you look at their group, with all due respect to Mexico, Sweden, and South Korea, if you really were, it's. There has to be a significant drop-off going on if you end up being in last in that group in which they were. And, yeah, Mexico has looked great or looked great in their first two matches. And Sweden, Sweden. also looked pretty yeah. good. But you, I mean, if you're Germany and you're going to be the Germany that we've come to expect, you should not be finishing last. This is the first yeah. time since 1936. It wasn't. It wasn't the uh, hardest group, but it wasn't an easy group either. I mean, if they were in Group A, like Uruguay, if you put Uruguay, Germany plays Uruguay, Germany easily wins Group A, no question. Well, all right. Let's not linger on a team that's no longer in the tournament. And it's not. It's not uncommon for for <laughs> these for these teams. <laughs> like, what was it four of the five champions, defending champs, have gone out in the group right. stage? Right. I mean, so that's just that's a case by case basis, though. Yeah. It's a fun stat to say, but it's sort of a trend now. We had four or five. I guess it's a trend, but yeah. Ugh. Which is these coaches that stick around don't know when to throw some guys overboard. Yeah, that's the yeah. trend. Well. My one takeaway from the group stage <laughs> was that let's not get hung up on injuries and fitness and off the field issues or lack thereof and how it might affect the actual team. Is because that a shot at me? No, 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 no. It's not a shot at you because I was on board with you. Trying to, to sound like it. <laughs> I was on board with you about Mexico heading in yeah. and how Argentina was great because we hadn't heard anything. And same, we said the same thing about Spain. And I'm still not convinced by them, but they did you, win their group. You will be. <laughs> when Spain and Argentina go out in the next round, you're going to end up contradicting what you just said now. Ah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Speaking of the next round, the round of 16 has some fantastic matchups. I am pumped about basically every single one of them, but let's start with the top of the bracket, I guess. Uruguay, Portugal, and France versus Argentina. A potential for a Messi versus Ronaldo matchup in the quarterfinals. Dun, dun, dun. And nice. don't write off Uruguay and France, who might actually be the favorites in both of those matches. I mean, France to Argentina, two very good teams. I expect France to win this game. I think I said it on a, our last podcast that I'm just not convinced at the Argentinian back line, especially with Mascherano playing as poorly as he is. He had, I, France, he has, game, France has not had a breakout game yet, specifically you know, their attacking players, Griezmann and Mbappe. I think this is an opportunity for that. I expect a very open game, maybe a 4-2 3-2 win for France. Uruguay, Portugal, I don't know what to think because Portugal on their day looks really good and Ronaldo's capable of scoring a hat trick against basically anyone. But then again, Uruguay looked really good in a group A that really wasn't too strong. So I don't really know what to think about that one. It's a pretty even match for me, Marcus. Do you agree? Yeah, two teams that know how to grind out results and know how to get the desired results and don't really care about uh, entertaining anybody while they do it. So I wonder what the odds are looking like, but it'll be very even and it could go either way. But I have a feeling stars will be, will be the ones that decide it. And I'm talking about Luis Suarez, Edinson Cavani, Cavani and Cristiano Ronaldo. I like Argentina to be France because I looked through some of their post-game press conferences from game three and they were basically trashing themselves and their performance and saying how they needed to become basically a different team in the knockout rounds. Who was Argentina? That? Argentina. Yeah. And I mean, they're, they're correct, and like, yeah. yeah. Talk is cheap. That's true. Talk is cheap, but it's kind of like what we talked about after that Argentina match and what you brought up, Marcus, that they had sort of their moment with the fans and maybe a wake-up call. And, yeah, it took a grinded-out victory in their last ma group play match. But they still got the job done. And again, France is not really convincing. So I just think with all the talent that they have, that they're finally going to put it together. And I like them to go on a very deep run in this World Cup. Argentina. Argentina. I think we're going to see a completely different team in the knockout rounds than we mm. saw in the group stage. And I also feel good about this because of 
how much it has all been flipped on its head in the World Cup so far and just how crazy it's all been that I like the idea of somebody not looking so great heading into the knockout rounds end up doing well. Yeah, and this France-Argentina bears mentioning that this is youth versus experience. France being among the youngest teams at this uh, remaining in this level and Argentina has to be one of the older ones if Javier Mascherano is still out there. I thought he might have been watching this one from a wheelchair a few months ago, but no, he's, you know, he's he's out there still, right. still a key figure, coach on the field, El Jefe, oh, and not, hopefully he can kind of smooth out his play. Yeah, I'm not sh- I'm not convinced that Argentina can break down France's midfield and back line. France in their last seven games haven't given up one, haven't given up more than a goal. In any of those seven games, they have two straight clean sheets in this World Cup, entering the round of 16. Got Ngolo Conte, probably best defensive midfield in the world, top three easy. Pogba, Matuidi in the mid- midfield. I mean, it's, Loris is a really good goalkeeper. The back line is pretty solid as well. And Argentina just they don't look very convincing um, in their attack, which is kind of surprising when you've got Higuain, Messi, and and those guys. I meant to say this that how I think that they can change up their attack. This is something they haven't tried yet, and I don't know of any time that Argentina has ever tried it is to play Sergio Aguero and Gonzalo Higuain together up top with like Messi below them and kind of playmaking and having like a three-headed attack. It seems like they either choose Higuain or Sergio Aguero. And even though Aguero scored versus Iceland, it doesn't seem like they really produce a high level of chances for themselves. And I think why not try playing them together? And I think it could really work. And that's kind of what I hope to see either as a starting lineup, or it becomes what they do via sub, either Iguain or Aguero comes into the game and not for each other, mm. which has also happened. They've subbed on for each other, and it's kind of just a like for like. But I, I think if that happens, it's the highest ceiling for Argentina offensively. Because, I mean, you just have your most talented players on the field, and you, you can figure it out. What are the chances Argentina coach Lionel Messi... <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, Jorge Sampaoli <laughs> takes your advice. Fifty-fifty. Uh, okay. Because just because they haven't tried it and they're they're trying to get something going offensively, I mean, they've been experimenting throughout the World Cup. At some point, they have to pick something, settle on something, <laughs> right? I mean, if they go down one nothing early, you, your thing might come to fruition. Yeah. And nothing to lose at that point. Right. Okay. Brazil versus Mexico. Neymar, the big name, he looks very good to go to me, healthy. There was that concern heading into the tournament. Mexico, we were saying, looked to be the hottest team and like the trendiest and and just the fans were great and all of that. But they were thinking... Boy, uh, did they just go belly up in that last... They they uh, did not look good against Sweden. But they did produce some amazing videos of Mexico fans and South Korea fans... (laughs) You know, becoming best friends. It's my single favorite thing about the World Cup. <laughs> it's so great. Far. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. It was like, there was the video of the the so, ambassador, right? The ambassador <laughs> from South Korea to Mexico <laughs> being hoisted upon fans' <laughs> shoulders and drinking tequila out of a bottle. That's amazing. Other random Koreans in Mexico being paraded around, down, up and down the streets. Yeah, it was incredible. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. But now, look what they've done by losing that game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've gotten themselves a date with Brazil who looks pretty good. Maybe not all systems go like clear favorite, but they're one of the favorites. And it's that moment again where can Mexico reach the quarterfinals and it's just like you got to face Brazil. I don't I don't like it for Mexico unfortunately. As much as I I want them to I'll be cheering for Mexico. But I think Brazil is going to win this match because I just think they're too talented. You won't get an argument from me there. Mexico, I think, is capable of beating them, but I would give a slight edge to Brazil. A couple 2 nothing wins, two 2 nothing wins to end the group stage. Um, pretty A good win against Serbia, a Serbian team that I think is does have some talent. Um, and yeah, I mean, 90% of Neymar is still better than a lot of players in the world. So even if he's not fully healthy, he's still going to be a threat. I would definitely favor Brazil to go through, but it won't be easy because yeah. Mexico fights as well as anyone. Brazil Marcus. is favored. Are you still getting fat burritos? Mexico, uh, I haven't had another one okay. since then, but uh, Can't have it, yeah, in the next couple days I will. <laughs> yes, Brazil is favored. 
And yes, we expect Brazil to win, but I'm not ready to jump off Mexico's ship just yet. Uh, I think that loss to Sweden kept me and many other, uh, or many Mexico fans from getting carried away. Yeah. Uh, which was, you know, I think, I think everybody that was following that team was a little in danger of getting a little too carried away. But it was also a good wake up call for the team as to what they have to do. I would usually just pick Brazil to hammer Mexico, but I think, you know, mentally, this Mexico team will play without fear against Brazil and maybe beat them. It'd be similar to them beating Germany, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they They've showed already beaten Germany. Yeah. yeah. They show that they can hang with the with the elite squad and, and beat them. So I have a prediction. Yeah. If Mexico beats Brazil, Mexico will win the World Cup. Wow. I mean, they, it doesn't get much easier. They'll probably be facing Belgium. Yeah, I know. But I got the bracket right here. <laughs> it is the tougher side of the bracket. Yeah, I know. That uh, side of the bracket is really tough. Well, who's the who's the top dog on this side of the bracket? I guess Brazil. I think yeah? it's France or Portugal. God, enough with France, man. Yeah. I said Portugal <laughs> too. <laughs> and wait, wait, why Portugal? I mean, France made the final of the Euro 2016. They came into this tournament as the third best odds. At I home. mean, you Portugal kind of got lucky versus Morocco. They got lucky know. versus Iran. Yeah, too. yeah, lucky <laughs> versus Iran. But you need luck. You do need luck. And, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo is a pretty lucky guy. Things seem to go his way. Yeah. He's had a nice life. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Brazil versus Mexico on July 2nd. A lot of people in the United States will be watching that one, obviously. Got to try and get to a Brazilian steakhouse in the Boston area to watch this one. At 10 in the morning? Why not? Steak at 10? Because you have to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Next we round. can have uh, delivery or something. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. So Belgium versus Japan. One final note on yeah. uh, Brazil, Mexico. Wayne Rooney, who uh, announced was announced as a DC United player today, I think his introductory press conference is being scheduled to take place during this Brazil, Mexico game. <laughs> DC United, please figure it out. <laughs> yeah, move the press conference. <laughs> Belgium versus Japan. I like Belgium. They've looked great. Yeah, they've. Speaking of tournament favorites. Entering the knockout rounds, they defeated England in their final match. No Romelu Lukaku in that one. England didn't play Harry Kane, so we didn't really learn much from that match, I don't think. A lot of changes to the squads for both teams. But Belgium, if anything, proved maybe they have a little more depth, which you could need, especially with the players end up, yellow card accumulation, whatever could happen. But I think it's just going to be very tough for Japan to beat Belgium with Belgium playing as well as they are. So I like Belgium. I yeah. like Belgium, too. Of all the round of 16 teams, I think I am most surprised about Japan being yeah. here because my expectations for them coming into the tournament were uh, the lowest. And of the five Asian teams, they're the only one that made it. And I would have expected South Korea, Iran, or Australia to outperform Japan at this World Cup. And I think that the earthquake that struck Osaka, I think two days before Japan's opener, played a big role in uh, bringing this team together under their coach, who was hired, I think, in April. You know, and I know I like to talk about off-field things, <laughs> but yeah, this guy's only been in charge for two and a half, three months and bringing him to the round of 16. And he's a locally based coach as well. Wow. Marcus, you just you have you have the beat on every story of every know. team. That's what I do all day. <laughs> yeah, I mean Belgium has looked as 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 good as anybody in this tournament, and they're scoring tons of goals. It wasn't the strongest group outside of England, but I mean when they're firing all cylinders, that's a tough attacking unit to slow down. Have uh, they hit their uh, top gear yet? I don't think they have. Does that worry you? I don't. No, it doesn't worry me. I think that you know they've looked really good so far, and I think Hazard I think can play better. Lukaku is one of the better national scorers, I think, right now. So, I mean, I think I think they can beat Japan. I think we'll learn a lot about Belgium in, in the quarterfinals if they get there. Quarterfinals, um, no more. That's where they end. Um, no more, no less. You've been downing Belgium since they beat Panama 3 to nothing. No, <laughs> I've, been doubting, I've been doubting them long before that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this is, they're in the midst of their so-called golden generation, and they need, yeah. s they need some results here it. because yeah, they... And how golden is that generation, really? This is the thing good, about the Belgium, uh, the hype machine I've been hearing about for the last six years, is that, yeah, these guys are good. Yeah, they play in the Premier League. But 
outside of Eden Hazard, Kevin De Bruyne, yeah, I'm not that high on uh, the rest of them. That's okay. all I'm saying. Well, that's and, why. And don't get me going on their coach, Roberto Martinez. I well, I think Belgium Brazil is going to be about whom I've had works. doubts for. Belgium is going to be what? Belgium versus Brazil in the quarterfinals. That's what I'm predicting. Fireworks. Fireworks. I mean, that could be the most exciting game of the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. But Especially when Mexico's in that game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on Spain versus Russia, the host country, <laughs> Moscow. Spain is the favorite, right? Yep. It's all going to according to plan, Mark. Yeah, sure. But <laughs> Spain so has not looked very good. I think Group B in general with Portugal and Spain, the, the way the points laid out just didn't really go with the run of play. I thought Morocco really had a tough time and maybe deserved more and that one of these teams shouldn't even be in the knockout rounds. But on the other hand, Russia looked very impressive until they came up against Uruguay. And they're the host country. Everybody doubted the host country. And here we are again with the urge to doubt the host country. And Spain just looks right for the picking. They, they are, but this is not the team that is going to knock them off. Uh, Russia destroyed a bad Saudi Arabia team. They, they were hit, awful. They beat Never. an Egypt team that did not have Mo Salah. And they played the only good team in that group, I Uruguay. They had Salah, they have but Salah? they didn't have yeah, I mean, he wasn't. a fit and firing right. Salah. And then they played Uruguay and lost 3 nothing. I'm not convinced with Russia. Yes, Spain has not looked as good as they should, but they are, I think, a notch, probably two notches above Russia. And if they lose this game, it would be a massive disappointment for Spain. I think they lose I to agree Croatia. That it would be a they, massive disappointment. They lose to Croatia. I think Spain does in the in the quarterfinals. I think Croatia, we'll talk about Croatia in a second, but Russia is not good enough to knock off Spain, even if Spain is not playing as well as, as they can. I like Russia to win this game just based on pure chaos, and it just will make sense to me for Russia to win. I've <laughs> made one prediction in ink. Oh. I just oh, there we go. It. There it is. It's, it's it says been Russia. <laughs> One word, Putin. Yeah, he'll have his way. I don't think he's ready to. It's not out of the realm of, pos <laughs> of you know possibility. Yeah. Russia and Spain is just. They're lucky to be here. Nobody's gonna cry for Spain if they end up no losing. In the They've been races. tripping and stumbling their way through this tournament, and somehow they landed in the round of sixteen. Speaking of Putin, haven't heard a whisper about any sort of hooliganism or whatever really disrupting anything. I'm sure it's going on somewhere, but I don't know, Marcus, I feel like you would know about it, if anything. I haven't heard anything. Yeah, no. so good for them. I mean, it was a lot of talk heading into the tournament. We don't really need to get into it, though. No, the security seems to be uh, been running pretty well so far, yeah. which is a good sign. So, By well, do you mean repressively well or just well? I haven't heard it seen any major incidents yeah. that I've heard of. That, uh, let's continue. Croatia versus Denmark. <laughs> Croatia to me um, has looked fantastic. They dominated Argentina and maybe people are just down on Argentina so much that Croatia isn't getting enough credit for how well they played in the group stage. But I, there's another team that I like to go very far. And I think that, again, didn't get enough credit for doing what they did against Argentina. And it just is the proof to me that they are a force to be reckoned with. I like them to beat Denmark and probably beat them easily. And then I'll jump ahead and say I like them to beat Russia and probably beat them easily. And maybe not really have a problem because of the other teams in the bracket until they reach the final. Did you just put Croatia in the World Cup final? I'm putting Croatia I, you know, into was, the final. I was about to make that same prediction. I think they will go to the final. This, I mean, this side of the bracket is pretty weak. It's And they're really good. Probably the best They will be the Denmark. In, unless Spain gets their act together, I think that they kind of have... They've already beaten a tougher team than any other team in the rest of their bracket. Unless England kind of well, maybe England's playing really well, but Colombia hasn't looked very good either. I'm not really high on Switzerland or Sweden. I love Croatia. Luka Modric, he's 
The hair is great. He's so good. How do you, how do you, he's had some, incre- they've had some great goals. They can score from anywhere. I love watching them. I hope they, their jerseys are great. What's not to like? No, they're, they're playing absolutely fantastic soccer. I'm going to write it in right now. And the wow. I think this, <laughs> if they play Spain, I think that'll be their toughest matchup of this side of the bracket. And yeah, I, I agree with you, Mark. I, I will put them in the final. All right. Marcus, you thought it was too much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it just sounded a little too... Yeah, Croatia in the World Cup final? Well, no sure. Way. They're, not, they're not your traditional no. power. But something, will, yes. something will blow up before then. <laughs> and I think whoever comes out of the other side of that, uh, this side of the bracket, will upset Croatia. I agree. And it will be an upset. Mm-hmm. Because apparently the Croatia hype train has left the station. All right. It is speeding out of control. <laughs> <laughs> Are we all in agreement that the top of the bracket or the left side, would dem- dem- depending on which way you're looking at it, will produce the champion? Uh, yes. The odds are better, I think. But, I, I, yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, yes. I, I mean, whoever comes out. But the thing is, what if... And are we all agreeing that it won't be Belgium? Mm. I don't think it'll be Belgium. Probably not, but I wouldn't be shocked either. Uh, all right, well, let's let's get to the end of the round of 16. <laughs> Sweden versus Switzerland. Um, maybe not the sexiest matchup, but I like Switzerland to win, even though Sweden just seems to stick around. <laughs> Somehow they've made it all the way to the round of 16 from eliminating Italy to the round of 16, but I like yeah. Switzerland to finally bring their run to an end. Um, just simply because I guess Switzerland is better on paper. What do you I think, Marcus? Sweden. 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 Yeah. I agree. Sweden. Sweden. I'll write that one down. Too. I hate Sweden. I see extra time in this game. Skiing yes. Everywhere. I see a very like a one-one or zero-zero draw. Okay. Extra mm-hmm. time. What Maybe some VAR involved. Yeah, I <laughs> see like just a slugfest, a slugfest, like ugly game. Yeah, ugly game. Mm-hmm. Not that these teams can't score, but. I see a, of an, uh, an ugly game. I see Switzerland controlling and dominating possession, which plays right into Sweden's hands. And, yeah, Sweden, they know what they're doing, how to execute their game plan, and uh, they could go to the World Cup final. All right. Okay. Wait, what? <laughs> it's not inconceivable. No, I, I, I think they have a shot. Beat Switzerland. They beat uh, Colombia, Colombia or England, England, who... Yeah, they would only have to face one of Croatia or Spain. And then beat Croatia. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Croa- or, in- or Sweden could beat Croatia. Which is why I love Croatia in the final. But, Colombia versus England. England... I love this game. This is a great game. But... Jaimes Rodriguez came out in, like, what, the 20-something minute? It was fairly early, yeah. Today. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, he came on as a sub in their first game. Mm-hmm. And he's he limped through this tournament. Yeah, he he's not, not been, healthy, uh, which stinks. But England appears to be healthy, and they didn't really, as we talked said before, didn't really learn much from their third group stage game. But I also don't really buy into like their momentum being gone either. I'm not. I'm really not sure what to make of England. They've looked really good, but beating Panama, Panama and Tunisia, Tunisia <laughs> yeah, they should beat those teams. Um, Harry Kane should should score goals against those types of teams. And then they declined to reveal themselves against Belgium, which might be the biggest disappointment of the World Cup. That that game, which they we ended had, up meeting pretty yeah. much nothing. Well, not that it didn't mean anything. It's just that both teams uh, passed up the opportunity to announce themselves as contenders. Right. Uh, both field weakened starting lineup, sort of with one eye on the round of 16. And, yeah, it, uh, it's a shame. One of the great shames of the 2018 World Cup. Now that you say that, though. And let me just uh, yeah. finish my point. By doing that, uh, I think that shows a... Well, one, it's testing karma, which, you know, we know karma is a serious uh, thing. And, yeah, I think it shows sort of a lack of a winning mentality. Uh, Winning the World Cup, seven games, 
you can't just flick it on and flick it off. You know, right. you either got it or you don't. So, and England's uh, let's call it B team lost to Belgium. It's B team. Right. So, yeah, this. Uh, but Colombia without James Rodriguez, I can't. Uh, or he's not necessarily out, but they said he, well, yeah, uh, sure play, you know, he he, he trained well and everything felt good up until thirty minutes into the game. So this calf problem he has is going to keep recurring, keep popping up. But I think Colombia could beat England uh, even without Hamas. Um, just get to penalties, Colombia. <laughs> just, yeah. just, just get to penalties. Just get to penalties. <laughs> I was sort of saying, Marcus, as you were making that point, it kind of builds up that it's it seems like a, a very England story to have not taken the final group stage game seriously, end up losing in the round of 16, and everybody in England points to that last group stage game and says, that's why we lost, even though it probably really isn't the reason, but it's just the beautiful England storyline. I line. think it's a symptom of yeah. uh, a missing mentality required to win the World Cup or to reach the World Cup final. Which England will do neither. Right. I agree. But football and yeah, is I have not Columbia, coming home. I, I have Colombia beating England on my really? scratch bracket here. Wow. Um, just, just because I kind of like what you're saying. I, I don't think I had the words when I wrote it down. Mm-hmm. But of course, Marcus, you put it into words for me that. Didn't you say that just before we started? I, I did. Simplified <laughs> things. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I like Colombia over England. That, hey, what about you, Nick? This is a really, this might be the toughest game to pick because I think Colombia, even without Hamas Rodriguez, can beat England, but England, I don't think, I don't take much from their group. Yeah. Because of the teams they beat. I think England wins. Barely. I don't expect a convincing performance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, that brings us through the round of 16. We're running a little long, so I don't want us to go all the way through the rest of the bracket because I want people to come in and listen. Yeah, we can do this before the quarterfinals. Yeah, we can do it before the quarters, see how right we were about the round of 16. I'll keep track of my picks at least. You're you're probably going to throw this away, aren't you? Or do you want to keep it? (laughs) No, I want you to uh, make make the graphic that... I've got Russia beating Spain. Should okay. we uh, review real quick all what we have for all these games? So all right, yeah, the listeners just, are aware. I'll run through mine real quick. I have Portugal over Uruguay, Argentina over France, Brazil over Mexico, Belgium over Japan, Russia over Spain, Croatia over Denmark, Switzerland over Sweden, and Colombia over England. Nick? Hmm. I have Uruguay over Portugal, France over Argentina. Brazil over Mexico, Belgium over Japan, Spain over Russia, Croatia over Denmark, Sweden over Switzerland, and England over Colombia. A lot of favorites, which means I'm probably going to lose three or four of these, (laughs) because this is the World Cup. (laughs) Marcus, you didn't necessarily pick every game? I've got, I'm picking begrudgingly. Uh, Okay, you don't have to, you can No, I'll do it. Portugal over Uruguay. Argentina over France. Sorry, Nick Goss. <laughs> Mexico All right. over Brazil. Let's go. Belgium over Japan. Russia over Spain. Sorry, Nick Goss. <laughs> Croatia over Denmark. Sweden over Switzerland. And flip a coin and come up with Colombia over England. All right. Well, it's regardless, I think we've just got some phenomenal matches lined up for the round of 16. I hope the tournament like maintains its steam and and you know nothing really changes about how exciting it's been. It's obviously kind of becomes a different game when it's a knockout game. Mm-hmm. That's my biggest fear. But I think regardless it's going to be very exciting. I mean, a fun Saturday, a fun Sunday. My pre-tournament prediction for this World Cup was that it was going to be inverted from 2014, where the group stage in 2014 was one of the greatest things we'd ever seen. And then everybody just closed up shop in the knockout knockout rounds. I think that's going to flip this time. And I didn't expect the group stage to be as good as it was. And the knockout rounds is going to be a lot better. 
I hope you're right, Marcus. Then the I'm group sure. stage. That would be. I yeah. mean, if that would be. <laughs> I know. <laughs> best <laughs> World Cup ever. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is. I'm starting to wonder: Is this the best World Cup ever? So far, so good. Time will tell. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me. The round of 16 coming up this weekend, Saturday through Tuesday? Tuesday. Saturday, so, yeah. Sunday. So maybe we get back Monday, in Tuesday. here next Tuesday, right before the 4th of July. If you're following us, if you're listening to this on YouTube, be sure to go over to iTunes and search Nesson to follow us on iTunes. You can get all Nesson podcasts by searching Nesson on iTunes. And follow more World Cup coverage at Nesson.com slash World Cup. And also keep an eye out for our digital show, World Cup Now, that is all over the internet. Any last words, guys? I put this on uh, social media. I never want this World Cup to end. Me neither. You just be in a time loop. It'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, see you next week. Why I tell you so.